there, I'm Hugo from Tech Corner TV and today for a change and thanks to the nice people at Juntech who sent me for review the brand new KG140F. I bring you a DC voltage and current meter. These devices are also called colometers because they measure in columns the amount of electrical charge that circulates in a circuit. The KG140F that I have here measures DC voltage from 0 to 120 volts up to a maximum current of 400 amps. Devices like this are normally, although not limited to these uses, are used to measure the charge of batteries, for example, in a photovoltaic installation. The KG140F has very interesting features that in addition of showing you the voltage and current of the circuit, can monitor the battery charge resistance or its temperature, among other informations. Unfortunately, I don't live yet in a house where I can install a photovoltaic system with batteries and use this device for monitoring. Maybe this time next year, this situation will be different, but about that project, I will give more news in the year to come. That said, and because I don't have the ideal scenario to test this device, I'm going to simulate the circuit with my power supply and the DC electronic load, right here on my test workbench. As you can see, I have here the camera already set up for this. But enough said already, let's see the features of the KG F series and what's delivered in this box. Okay, let's jump into it. I have here the box to to see what's in it. This is the box that comes uh, with uh, with the device. Let's see what's in it. Uh, let me just open. Okay, we start by having a small user manual. Um, it's it's okay. It's small, but it's okay. You have here all the information. It's in color, well organized. Uh, yeah, with all the keys that you have to, to go and functions to, to program this device. So yeah, they did a, a good work. You have three uh, setup examples uh, with uh, internal power or external power for the display. Yeah, that's good. Also, we have in this bag uh, one temperature sensor this one and two cables uh, I will see in a moment or we will see in a moment how to use this and yeah we have also a terminal I don't know yet but yeah it should connect to the to the logic part with using this cable I think yeah so let's see what we have else here we have two terminals uh, as you can see they are 400 amps for connecting to the sensor i believe uh, we also have a cable for connecting uh, from the sensor uh, from the logic unit to the display and we have the sensor it, it's it is a, a little bit heavy this is the current sensor. We have here the, the socket for connection. We connect the current here. Okay. So this part uh, in the previous models, the VA300 and stuff like that, was uh, installed in the, in the logical part. That this part. Right now in this new model, they separated this and it's a very nice improvement uh, 
because uh, if you want to give some torque to the to screws or something like that it's it was impossible because because it was assembled directly with the electronics right now we have a electronics part a electronics box uh, the logic and we have a sensor and also let me show you we have the display uh, that's uh, the third part of this uh, kit okay with the buttons and everything else so the box it's pretty well documented even without the manual if you see here all the pins have the uh, all the sockets are here have the pins and what the, the pins do in each of it for example ground out v external vcc ground yeah everything it's explained here for example this is the temperature the current sensor output control we have here the display uh lit kit no, no, don't know we can also connect here um, a relay to, co to disable the charging of the batteries okay that looks good i, I forgot to tell you uh, in this one we have here a switch in two watts you will uh, use the internal power to power the display if you change for 3 watts, you it will use external power to power the display. Uh, yeah, that's it. As you can see, the connectors. It seems pretty good. Okay, let me show you how I've set up this test environment. We have here the display unit connected to the logical unit uh, through this cable. Everything is powered by this small cable that is connected uh, through this crocodile uh, clip to the power supply and also we have here this crocodile clip that will uh, connect to the DC electronic load. In here we have the uh, temperature uh, probe connected here and we have some cables that go from the logical unit to the uh, sampler as they call it the current probe or the sampler this one is connected to the DC electronic loads and this clip this crocodile clip it's connected to the power supply let me turn the power supply on already press set with some values and yeah it's working and it's displaying information let's see what we have in here now that you saw how the simulation is set up let me show you how what information you have on the display so let's start with this one this is the lock indicator if you press for a few seconds uh, for a few moments the ok button it will lock the, the display it will not allow you to to work with any other button until you unlock okay this one uh, will inform you that the data is being saved and the output is being generated you have also here the unit indicator to connect to the logical uh, unit you have also the temperature that is being registered with the temperature sensor and the accumulated working time of this unit here we have a Ethernet symbol and when you have problems connected to connecting to the logical unit this will have a cross a red cross over this symbol indicating that you are with problems in the screen we have also uh, well the battery indicator the capacity indicator of the battery in, in my case uh, it's not uh, real because i am using a load balance uh, a dc electronic load and the power supply without batteries uh, it's just for reference uh, you have here also the a very important value if you are using batteries that is the battery internal resistance it's in ohms and when the battery is degrading uh, you have a bigger resistance for charging so when this value is very high you are having problems with the batteries you have here the battery time left indicator 
and here you have the ellipsed amp hour values. In this line you have the amp hour remaining, and right now it's 15 amps hours, 15.366. Uh, the big display you have the voltage indicator, uh, the voltage he detects in the circuit and the amperage or the current in the circuit. You have the usage of uh, the watts usage and the kilowatts usage per hour. You have here two small arrows, I don't know if it's noticeable in the image, but this one in blue in the same color of the amps. Uh, indicates that uh, you are draining the battery. If the, this other arrow is in red, it's on, uh, it will indicate that the batteries are charging. So, uh, what we have next? We have here the configuration menu. So, we have here the, the language. We have English and I believe it's on English or Chinese nothing else. We can clear the current data and all data of the device. We have also the amp hour preset value, the amp hour remaining here and the brightness of the device. Uh, below we have the protection section and this one is pretty interesting. The LPP it's the under voltage protection. Uh, you define here the, the minimum voltage. And if the voltage of the circuit is below that voltage, uh, you will have the, the protection uh, triggering. You also have over protection, uh, over voltage protection. Uh, this one is pretty common in power supplies and stuff like that. Uh, you also have here a threshold to define if obviously if the voltage is over the, the threshold it will also uh, trigger the protection the same for current over current protection with the amps uh, for for threshold and negative current protection is also the, the same as the LVP but for current so if the current goes below a threshold that you define here, uh, it will trigger the protection. Zero values, it's uh, disabled. You have also the over power protection. You will insert here the, the watts that you, want to, that you want to trigger the protection and over temperature protection. In the same way, using the probe, the temperature probe, you will define here the temperature that will uh, trigger some action. We have here also the recovery time. What this means is if uh, some protection is triggered, and let's imagine it is the under voltage protection, after uh, the, the voltage comes to the normal, the seconds before the, the circuit goes to the normal state, the device enters in the normal state and disabling the protection. You have the standby time, it's the time the display will stay on after some status uh, change. You have the voltage calibration and the current calibration, also the temperature calibration. Below you have the logical and display addresses that you can change in here. You have the delay time. The delay time is something like this. Uh, imagine that uh, the voltage uh, protection, over voltage protection uh, spikes uh, a bit, or, or the value goes up the defined threshold for a moment and you will be able to delay the protection triggering here. Imagine that you insert here two seconds, then the, the, the voltage will have to be two seconds over the threshold to uh, trigger the protection. If it's zero, it's triggered immediately after uh, changing the passing the threshold. Uh, you have the current ratio and also the monitor. If you activate the monitor option, uh, only uh, the brightness and a few other options will be able to be set in here. 
you have to use the PC software or the mobile application to change the, the settings um, in the device. Okay, and finally you have the relay modes. You can connect a relay to this logical unit, for example, to to cut the the power uh, to to charge the batteries or something like that to avoid uh, damage and it's configured here and in the end you have the restore to factory restore all it will do uh, something like a factory uh, restore and that's it all the the options that this device has right now let me connect this to the mobile and see which options and how the data is shown on the mobile so we have here the app for controlling the kgf uh, device it has basically the same information that we have on the display uh, on the display unit for starters we have uh, four menus uh, the main that is the this screen that you are watching now we have the curve it shows the the curves the usage curves uh, over the time we have also the settings uh, basically the same options you have on the settings on the display unit and a quick about us with the version and the official website let's start by the main in the main to connect to the device you just have to click on here here on search and as you can see you, we have here already the device to connect be very careful because if you don't have the position uh, the gps location activated on your mobile phone you will not be able to connect because the device will not appear here why do we need to have the gps location activated it's a completely different story uh, i will ask this to john tech but it's pretty weird uh, why do we need the gps location activated to be able to locate here the bluetooth unit anyway here it is just click on it and right now it's connected it's pretty easy uh, really really easy to to use you have here the voltage the voltage indicator the current indicator also the remaining uh, amps hour the power the consumed power in watts electro uh, the kilowatts hour also uh, the battery right now it's charging and consuming at the same time as you can see by the arrows on the display uh, also the this the ex uh, external temperature the run time and yeah delay yeah and all the other indicators uh, with amps hour uh, the battery left and the internal resistance also in the bottom so if you press here for example on voltage you are able to set the input voltage without any problem and uh, uh, you have both sides to to configure okay uh, the same for the input max current uh, you can also uh, where it is do the same for uh, the temperature to calibration and yeah, that's it you can clear for example current clear you can zero the current usage and also you can clear all accumulated data i will do that okay and it's zero is if you notice on the display unit it's uh, the time the usage the accumulated usage time right now it's uh, 10 seconds because it was reset so uh, we have also um, input percentage of remaining capacity uh, manually can be changed here right now it's 76 percent and we can connect and disconnect look i'm going to press here this on button on the top on the right top uh, of the screen and if you notice on the display it will say it is off okay i will connect again yeah and we are connected again so we have a settings button here on the middle below the battery uh, you can set the preset battery amps hour value right now it's 20 and in this main screen that's it um, 
nothing really much more to, to show. The, this is basically the same you have on the display. So let's see here the voltage and current real time curve. It isn't show anything right now. Well, it should. You can activate the current and the voltage is not showing anything. I don't know why. When I recorded previously the Portuguese version, it was showing here a graphic. Anyway, let's keep going. And in here we have basically the same uh, protections and configurations that you have on the unit. We can configure the OVP, the LVP under voltage protection, OCP, OTP, OPP, and CP. And we have here protection revert time is as i explained before when a protection is uh, triggered uh, when it it comes to the normal point uh, the time before uh, all the, cir the circuit state is restored we have also the button to turn the relay on and off the delay the set delay time we have uh, here also the setting address if you want to control another unit uh, that is connected to this system and we can also do a firmware upgrade uh, finally we have the about us page it's just the version and uh, yeah let me see if yeah, i don't know why don't we let me change the voltage yeah it should appear here something i don't know why it's not showing i will restart the app uh, okay it just needed to be restarted Okay, we are now seeing the, the graph uh, working. I will change the voltage to 12 volts so we can see it change. Yeah, it's working. So again, to 24 volts. Okay, it, it is tested. It works okay. You can ob obviously uh, turn the current on and the voltage on, as I told you before. And we have the X3 also here. Ah, now it, it shows the X3. So that's it, no, no big deal, and yeah, let's move on. Next, I will show you uh, three different diagrams, how you can wire this kit in three different use cases. The first one is the one I had here in my workbench and I show you working. It's just a self-powered uh, wiring diagram. Uh, take notice that on logical unit on the back you have to select the switch to 2W and yeah it's pretty simple to assemble no no biggie here so the next one will be a external power supply wiring diagram and if you take notice the switch on the back of the logical unit will have to be on the 3W position and you have there on the diagram a new external DC 10 to 80 volts power supply so this diagram shows how you can connect uh, this kit using the external power supply moving on this last diagram also show you how to connect with a power supply and also to power a relay to cut the circuit when charging the batteries for example uh, if you the OVP or OCP or even the temperature uh, protection triggers it will cut the, the power to the batteries so it's not hard you just need to connect to the output control socket the relay and also the external DC uh, power supply please take notice that the external power supply voltage shall be the same of the uh, the same working voltage of the relay like uh, 12 volts or 24 volts or something like that to wrap this up, this battery monetization kit, among other uses, gives you a very complete information about the battery conditions, like for example by showing you the battery temperature, or even its internal resistance, or even the status of the circuit if it's charging or discharging. You can easily know the remaining battery time to the charge that is uh, being applied to the circuit at that specific moment and also the accumulated consumption. 
It's a pity that I can't right now put this kit to on a real environment, like a solar installation, but I'm working on it. And as I told you before, maybe by this time next year, I can show you this working in a new location in production. The cost benefit ratio is good. This kit I have here, complete with the logic unit, the display and the sampler, costs about 47 euros or about 54 dollars or even 40 uh, pounds a good value for what you get this kit is very easy to install and you just need to follow the instructions but and this is very important don't forget that you might be working with voltage or amperage that might harm you so be careful and if possible always use a certified technician to install this kind of equipment so if this review was in any way useful to you please give a thumbs up hit the like button and if you haven't already consider subscribing it will help the channel a lot if you do subscribe, don't forget to also hit the bell so you can be the first one to be notified whenever I post a new video. That's all for today. Thanks for your company and watching until the end. Stay safe.